So I'm just going to sit over here across from me and you can just talk to me okay. <clears throat> normally. Just have a conversation, don't you know, okay. worry about the camera. Okay. Can you tell me your name? Um, tell me your name, where you live, and what you do. Okay, my name is Roberto Porta. I live in Managua, Nicaragua. I'm working in vocational education. And were you born there? Yes, I was born in Masaya, south of Managua. And uh, so what brought you to Texas? Well, I got a sister living in West Lacoa. We came to see her, and on the way back to Miami to fly back to Nicaragua, we have a stopover of five hours, which we took advantage to come here. And of course, you know, we had to see this. Why, why did you feel you had to see it? Well, you know, even though Nicaragua is a kind of remote country, I mean, it's, like, it's close geographically, but uh, I mean, when it comes to economics and uh, politics, we're very, very distant from, from you guys, from America. Uh, we know about history. We are very influenced by United States politics, and uh, everybody knows about John F. Kennedy, just as we know about Nixon, about Watergate, about Clinton and Tidewater, and all this stuff. So uh, I told my wife, hey, look, we're going to be four hours in Dallas. We might as well just hop on a train and go see and take some pictures of the site. I mean, John F. Kennedy and uh, American politics are very, very uh, known in Nicaragua. In a good way or a bad way? <laughs> well, in both ways. I think mostly, I mean, we, we sympathize with Americans. I mean, I, I'm all for America. I mean, I'm not pro-European or pro -French. the French position. I don't like it. And uh, you know we, we like America and we love um, politics in America. A lot of people know who George Washington was, but they don't know who the first president of Nicaragua was. That's a trivia question in our schools. You know. We seem to, to know more about American history than Nicaraguan history. Don't ask me why. I mean, it's just <laughs> <laughs> Would you uh, happen to know who G.B. Daly was? Say that again, say that again. G.B. Daly. Oh, uh, no, I know that the square is after him, right? It's named after him, the plaza. But no, I never met the guy or, or heard about him. Okay. Um, when, uh, when did you first hear the Kennedy story? The first time? Yeah. When I was in high school in Nicaragua, uh, we had a course, in, uh, again, in American uh, politics and society. It was a class about government and society. And we studied uh, Roosevelt, and uh, of course, you know, from the Russian side, Khrushchev, and then Kennedy. And then we knew that in 1963, about 15 days before my birth, actually, he got shot. And uh, we knew that it, uh, he, he was very uh, popular within American society for everything he was doing at the moment. And also we knew about Jackie, his uh, wife, and uh, that's how we knew about it. Did your family talk about it? Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know exactly who killed him or why. I mean, and I'm sure a lot of Americans still wonder why. But uh, we knew that he was a good guy. And good, good guys are not supposed to die, especially the way he did. So it, what kind of a figure, you know? Yeah. Um, so now, what's your feeling about, uh, about the assassination? Do you have a theory about it? Well, uh, <laughs> I was reading in the internet yesterday that uh, this guy, Oswald uh, Lee, I, don't, I forgot the name already, was a communist, supposedly. And that somebody complained, I think it was Jackie or some relative complained that, I mean, uh, look, you know, he got killed by some chippy communist instead of being killed by somebody who you know, represented some antagonism. That's what I heard. But uh, theory-wise, I don't know. Some people say that it was the same CIA who killed him. I mean, you go figure. I mean, I have no idea. Do you ever read any books on the subject? Uh, conspiracy no, uh, I, heard, I, I read something, but not a, not a whole book. But I did read some stories about the, the, the conspiracy theory, and the single shot theory, I remember. And also I read about, I saw the movie JFK, in which they mentioned that. Uh, what did you think of that movie? Uh, it was close to reality when you compare the, the, the history, and the written history, with the movie, I would say is close to, you know, kind of. So, uh, what is your 
impression of Kennedy as a president? Uh, well, I wasn't born when he was a president, but uh, for what I have studied and read, uh, he meant good. He was making a lot of uh, social changes, you know, changes in society, which might have uh, affected some interest from the right. You know. Also, uh, I heard that he was in a position in which he was beginning to confront the, how do you call it, the status quo? You know what I'm saying? Like the, what people believe at, at the moment. And he was a threat to some, some sectors, some uh, in, uh, influential sectors. So you never know. It could be somebody behind Oswald somebody you know behind the CIA. I mean, anything is possible. So what do you think the world might have been like if he hadn't been shot? Uh, hmm, very different, I guess. For one thing, I, I, I don't think Nixon, for example, would have come to power. I'm sure he would have, uh, Kennedy would have had two terms at least. You have four years, right? And the maximum is two terms, for the way I understand. So he, I'm sure he would have gone the two terms. And uh, if he would have succeeded on the second term, chances are that another Democrat would have taken over you know, at, at the moment. In 1968 would have been, I think, right? And uh, maybe Nixon in the 70s wouldn't have had the chance. I don't know. Definitely would have been more, it would have looked like a Clinton era kind of ahead of the ahead of times, you know, kind of. In Nicaragua we sort of compare Clinton, even his look, his demeanor, to Kennedy. I mean the way he expresses himself, the way he talks about civil rights and uh, the health uh, issues, you know, the, the gate issues and all this stuff, liberal issues, you know. I think Kennedy was ahead of him in that in that in that aspect. Do you know how is the perception of Kennedy's policies towards Latin America? Well, you, <laughs> there's a story. Uh, I lived in Miami for a while, about seven years ago, and the Cuban uh, society in Miami uh, don't like uh, Kennedy because they feel that Kennedy betrayed Cubans because back in 1961 or 62, I remember, there was going to be an invasion, Bay of Pigs, and supposedly everything was ready, and that Kennedy had promised and even compromise the air support. Again, this is just a theory, right? I mean, the Cubans say. And at the last moment, he, uh, he said, no, we're not supporting you guys. And he withdrew the, the Air Force from going into the invasion. So Cubans, even nowadays, they, uh, the Republicans, because of that, I mean, I don't know if you've been to Miami, but uh, they're very Republicans. And that's one of the reasons they despise uh, Kennedy and Democrats, because they feel they were betrayed back then. Not everybody, I mean, I would say 95% of Cubans in Miami feel that way. How do you think the rest of Latin America felt? Well, no, I don't think, uh, besides Cubans, a little Nicaraguans, you know, are very sympathetic to uh, Kennedy. And uh, again, you know, you cannot look at the, at the guy just by one hypothetical bad decision he took at the moment of withdrawing the air support. I think as a, as a president, uh, he had a, lot of, uh, had a lot of sympathy, people like him. And uh, I believe that he had a program called uh, Progress, and uh, I forgot the translation right now. Road to Progress, I think. It was a program oriented toward Latin, Latin America, sort of the Marshall Plan that they had in the, after the Second War in Europe, kind of toward Latin America. And I think Kennedy was uh, backing that up, so people sympathized with him, of course. No, not yet. Have you gone over to the Kennedy Memorial? Uh, no. Did you know that there was a memorial over there? Where? It's I behind that courthouse. Main Street, maybe? Or, or? Yeah, if you follow yeah, it. We might pass by on down. the way back. Yeah. Yeah. Just that the time is pressing us because we got a plane to catch at 1 p.m., so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, uh, since you got to get going, I will just ask you, um, what do you think will become of this spot in the future? think people will continue to come? Like oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm sure that after I tell my friends in Nicaragua and my, uh, my brother, my sisters, what I just saw, they're going to come here. I'm going to try to make them come because this is history. I mean, it's, like, it's living history. Not like Hillary's book, but it's like more uh, uh, illustrating history. Is there anything when you looked at it, you know, what did you feel? 
Well, after seeing pictures, seeing films, seeing it on the internet, and finally being here, you know, I mean, looking at the cross on the on the street is like uh, it's impressive, I and mean, it's like something that is not shocking, but it's something like it, it gives you a special sensation. And uh, seeing that, it's a testimony of the risk of being a president or a high figure in, in public policy these days, you know. And it's like, uh, I wouldn't venture, if I were a president, to come out on the open like, like he did back then, you know, or like Clinton did in his first or second inauguration in Washington, I think, when he actually walked through Pennsylvania Street, I think, with Chelsea and Hillary. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> because of that, somebody might shoot you. And you don't even know why. That's the sad thing, you know. Well, since this is going to be watched, this is going to be seen by American students and, you know, we're in America, I just want to tell you as a Nicaraguan Fortigner, you know, that you guys, you Americans, should, uh, should not take for granted your freedom. I mean, we in Nicaragua went through two wars just to have, you know, a kind of a freedom. We're still not free 100%. We are learning democracy until now, in the year 2003. And I see you guys fighting sometimes for issues that are very, very, that in Nicaragua, you know, would never even thought about it, you know. You have to appreciate what you have, you know, you are a model for other countries, you know. We in Nicaragua, at least I respect and admire your system, your democracy. I, uh, I came, I studied college here, and uh, I really value what I learned here, my experience, you know. I mean, this is a great society. <clears throat> you have, you're great people. I mean, no society is perfect, of course, but I think you are very close to that, more than in Europe, more than in the Soviet Union, more than in China. So you have to appreciate it. Could you give me an example of what we, what we argue over that's not worth it? <laughs> <laughs> that something that is not worth it? Yeah, you said that we argue over things you would not Well, <laughs> yes, I can give you an example. Uh, you consume too much. You spend too much unnecessarily. I have friends that you know, buy a car, let's say a Corvette or a whatever, a Mustang, a Ford, and five years later, they finish paying it off. You know, they're out of debt. And the car is brand new. They could use it for 10 more years. But no, they change it because the neighbors say, look, you know, it's like it's old fashioned now. It's, it's not good anymore. There's a new, brand new, you know, it came out with this color or with this kind of tires, you know. And they go for it. And they go back to the bank and get indebted again, you know what I'm saying? So. That's something that you guys uh, can spare. I don't think you need to spend that much money. You have to uh, be more like Europeans in that sense. You know, you have to be more, what is the word, thrifty? You have to learn how to save more. Because that's one thing that the world does know that you guys spend just kind of materialistic way. And you don't need that. Well, thank you very much. All right. Good way to start off.